The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for January 17, 2018. I'm teaching a series on the benefits of prayer and fasting. This is part nine, the benefits of prayer and fasting, part nine. Let's get into it. So we looked at Jesus who went on a 40-day fast. We looked at Moses who went on a 40-day fast, and now we're looking at Elijah. Yesterday, I introduced you to Elijah. We saw how One moment, he was this fearless man. I mean, he was operating under the power of God. He was doing things that were supernatural and amazing. And the next moment, he was frustrated. He was scared to the point where he was ready to die, to give up his life. He even said to God, he said, Lord, I've had enough. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And then the Lord knew that Elijah needed to get some rest. The Lord led him to get some sleep. He gave him some food. He let him get some more sleep. He gave him some more food. And then he was led of God to go on a fast for 40 days. He, he walked from where he was all the way to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. And along the way, he didn't eat for 40 days and for 40 nights. And when he got to Mount Horeb, he had this supernatural encounter with God while he was on this fast. And so the Lord says, to, uh, to Elijah, hey, get to this spot right here in Mount Horeb and I'm going to pass by you. Kind of like what he did with Moses. He passed by Moses. And when Moses came down from the mountain, he had the glory of God shining on his face. And so, so Elijah's there and he's ready for this supernatural encounter with God. And so he's standing there. He's waiting for what's next. God said he's going to pass by. And then the Bible says that a very strong wind blew. The wind caused the mountains to break apart. It broke large rocks in front of the Lord. It was this huge supernatural wind. So obviously, Elijah thought that was God. But the Bible says, but the Lord was not in the wind. And then after that, there was an earthquake. So he's standing there and the whole earth is shaking from under him and all of this stuff is going on. So obviously you would think that that's God. And then the Bible says, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, there was a fire. And all of a sudden, just a fire broke out. And then the the Bible says once again, the Lord was not in the fire. He's feeling the heat. Surely that's God. No, the Lord was not in the fire. And after all of that, the Bible says, there was a still, gentle voice. The King James calls it a still, small voice. And the voice was God. God was in the that voice, not all this other stuff. God was in a still, gentle voice. What does this mean to you today? You can read that in First Kings chapter 19. What does this mean to you today? I have three things to share with you on today as it relates to prayer and fasting, as it relates to Elijah. So prepare your heart for what God will say. Here we go. Number one, here's the truth. The truth is we all run the risk of getting burned out. We all do, all of us. No one is exonerated. And, I t- and we looked at that yesterday. I'm going to just continue to flow in that same vein a little bit. People don't get burnt out from God. They don't. I mean, if you're walking with God and you have a relationship with the Father, you don't get burnt out from that. The more you walk with God, the more he will renew you and restore you and empower you to keep going. But people surely do get burnt out from doing things in the name of God. See, there's a difference between you walking with God and then just doing stuff in the name of God. Uh, you know, because a lot of times, if we're honest, we're doing stuff that God didn't lead us to do. <laughs> and those things can surely burn us out. This is why you must keep a clear ear towards God. He will let you know when you're outside of the will of God. He will let you know, hey, son, hey, daughter, you're off course. I need you to make a course correction. You're off course. I need you to make a course correction. Or, hey, I need you to get some rest. I need you to be restored. Allow me to build you back up again. So we need to be able to hear the voice of God so that we can make those corrections. And, and here's another thing. Not everyone who's with you is for you. Obviously, as Elijah was going on this journey, he got this attack from Jezebel. And so there's going to be people uh, that are honestly just not, not, they don't have your best interest in heart. There are going to be people, you won't have to endure attacks along the way. For you to maximize the purpose and potential God gave you from the foundations of the world, for you to arrive at God's overall expected end for your life, for you to complete your divine assignment, you are going to have to endure and overcome attacks along the way. And this is why you got to have a relationship with the Father, because if you don't have a relationship with the Father and you get these attacks, listen, 
it gets to anybody, you know, it, it can get to the best of us to where you're tired of it and, and you just want to give up and cave in and quit and want to throw in the towel and, and even get to the point if, you, if you're not careful, like, like Elijah got to where you just want to die. I mean, you just want to leave this place. And that's why, unfortunately, uh, even Christian leaders commit suicide. You, you got to be very careful to, to have an ear to hear what God is saying so he can restore you and revive you and tell you when you need some rest and when you need to stop and you know all of these things so that you can walk with God because you're in this thing for the long haul. Number two, we all must take time to get restored in the presence of God. Now listen, I gave my life to Christ when I was 23 years old and I plan on walking with God to the day I die. I mean, this is, there's no retirement plan for the believer. There's, there's no like, you know, this isn't like till I'm 62 or till I'm 65. No, while I'm breathing, while I'm on this planet, I'm walking with God. While I'm on this planet, I'm, I'm walking out my divine purpose. I will never give up. I will never cave in. I will never quit. And, and I'm not going to die because I'm old. I'm not going to die because I'm sick. I'm only going to die when I'm done. So, so I'm here for an assignment. I'm here for a reason. And I'm going to keep going until I'm done. And when I'm done, then I can go. And until then, I can't go. And that's it. It's really that simple for me. So if you are truly committed to God for the long haul, and, and let me say that too, you got to be committed for the long haul. And if you are committed to God for the long haul, you're going to need to be restored and revived and rejuvenated along the way. I'll just use this morning as an example. This morning, I went live at, I think, like 3.54 a.m. I have a 6 a.m. Uh, flight to catch. That means that I had to get up at 2.45 so that I can hear from God, write today's word, record this video, post it, and then go, and then go do what I have to do. And so watch this, if you're doing something, I've been doing this for 20 years, not, you know, not two weeks, not 20 weeks, 20 years. And so throughout those 20 years, most of that time was in the military. So I had to do this if I was in Iraq, I had to do this if I was in Kuwait or in Bosnia, it didn't matter. So no matter where I was, I had to do this. And my commitment to God was, I will always do your work before I do mine, right? And so I'll take care of yours before I go do anything else. And so, you know, I, I did your work first. That's a seed. And then you always bless the, the work of my hands and he always does. But if you do this, even what I'm doing right now, if, if I'm not careful to be restored and revived and rejuvenated, uh, if I'm not careful to get rest when God needs me to get rest, then yeah, it's real easy to get burned out. It's real easy to get tired because at the end of the day, God has given me to, something to do that I have to get up early in the morning. I'm supposed to do it before I do anything else. And I've been doing it for a very long time. So you may not have today's word, but it doesn't matter. The, the issue is not about what I do or what you do. The issue is this. All of us need to hear from God. All of us need to get rest because walking with God is a marathon, not a sprint. If you don't Allow God to tell you when you need, you got to plan stops along the way, right? I mean, you're going to have to have some stops where the Lord can build you back up again. If you don't, then you might, you run the risk of getting like Elijah was to the point where you just want to, you want to give up and you want to throw in the towel. You might even want to quit. So having dedicated time for rest and restoration is critical. And fasting can help revive your relationship with God to the point where you're able to hear him again. This is what Elijah needed, and quite honestly, we all need that from time to time. So number three, and finally, I have three points this morning. This last point is going right back to our text. Your ear must be attuned to God's voice. In order to maximize your purpose and potential in Christ Jesus, you must be able to discern God's voice. See, there's a lot of noise in this world today, and you must be able to hear God's voice through it all. God positioned Elijah on this mountain. He was like, hey, man, I'm about to pass by. And Elijah was ready. He's ready to hear God. And then look at all the distractions. There was a wind. God wasn't in the wind. There was an earthquake. God wasn't in the earthquake. There was fire. God wasn't in the fire. And then there was the still small voice, the still gentle voice. And guess what? That was God. And see, and, and this happened, right? This supernatural experience happened while Elijah was on a 40-day fast. Fasting helps you 